Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. How are you? It's great to see you and welcome back. Today I'm going to be cooking, if you can't tell from the giant smile on my face, something that I have been thinking about since I found this cookbook many years ago. It's called The Original Roadkill Cookbook. And I thought, is this for real? Now the book is written tongue in cheek, so there's a lot of jesting going on. You can tell that just by some of the names of these recipes like windshield wabbit and barbecue bugs bunny. There are recipes in here and some tips in terms of how you can cook the items, how you can butcher the items. Now this whole book is about cooking food that you find on the road, animals that have been killed by vehicles. Now this idea of cooking roadkill is nothing new. People have been doing it for a long time, but I by no means am suggesting that you should go out and cook up some roadkill. But I found this cookbook and yesterday I was on my way to an early appointment to see an allergist and I drove along and saw a possum and I said, I have a cookbook just for that. On my way home, I'm going to check it out. So I stopped. <laughs> Possums are nocturnal animals, so they are active at night. So it was killed either in the evening, night, or early morning hours. No varmints had gotten to it, no flies, nothing of that sort. In New England, we're just coming into spring. It is still pretty cool out. If you don't follow me on social media, maybe you should, because I posted there of my excitement of finding this possum and what I could do with it. Many of you also said, please check the pouch. My possum was a young male so I didn't have to worry about any babies. Whole wide range of reactions and emotions, which I was absolutely fascinated by, because there is a lot of taboo about this idea of eating something that is dead, particularly something that is hit by a car, found on the side of the road. But the fact of the matter is that many people survive and get by by doing things like this, by foraging, by finding things that life has handed to them and i am fascinated by that and i've never tasted possum before which you can absolutely eat and people do eat it and i'm just curious about the whole thing i was also curious about the whole dressing and skinning and butchering of the animal as well i got a little bit of this when i lived in montana and helped a neighbor skin and butcher a deer which is a much larger animal but it's a very primal practice and there's a lot to learn about anatomy and in honor of the animal i am also very fascinated about what you can do with all the other cast off bits like the hide for example i would love to learn how to tan hides and make something out of it perhaps the whole process of these kinds of things really really interests me if you don't know that already so when i lived in montana i also learned of the word process used in the context of butchering an animal or that means you break the animal apart and get the different bits that you need and typically what's done with game is you hang it up and that allows gravity to weight the animal down so that you can pull the skin off and butcher the animal. Just remove the back legs and the front legs and the shoulder portion. Then I thoroughly wash the pieces and place them in my refrigerator. And at this point, they look like something that you would buy at the supermarket. And here we are. That is what I have of the possum, pavement possum, very appropriate. Uh, they say to stuff and roast it. I also refer to these two books, which I happen to have in my collection. And this one I picked up when I was living in Montana. It focuses mostly on larger game, lots of venison. This book was sent to me by beautiful, lovely Collins Backroom Cooking Secrets. And this one's pretty thorough. It's got big game, including antelope and bear and boar and buffalo, caribou, moose. But it also has small game including beaver, raccoon, and squirrel, but no mention of possum. But of course, then I had to ask all of my beautiful lovelies on social media what they thought, if they had any recipes, and lovely Dawn sent me a recipe from the Modern Encyclopedia of Cookery, which had the most thorough version of how to make possum with sweet potatoes. Now this kept coming up when I was doing research, possum plus sweet potatoes. And I learned that it's a classic Southern pairing. Even Faulkner writes about the combination of possum and sweet potatoes. In his Flags in the Dust book, he referenced Thanksgiving dinner in which they serve possum, among a bunch of other things, with sweet potatoes. And because I just came back from a trip to Louisiana, I've got the South on my mind. 
Alrighty, let's go ahead and start cooking our possum, shall we? So wild game tends to be pretty lean and in a lot of cases, tough. So that means it requires a long cooking time. So I'm gonna be pan frying it and then braising it for a little while in the oven. AP flour, season it with a lot of salt, freshly cracked pepper. And because I love it, I'm gonna add some white pepper too. And I really love this idea of not letting things go to waste within reason, right? And besides that, there's a certain resourcefulness I think that I also really appreciate. Plenty of kosher salt and white pepper and black pepper. When I lived in Montana, I took a gun safety class, a hunter's class. <laughs> I took it with a bunch of children, really. They were about 12 or 13 years old, and here I was, hi, Miss Emmy, in the class too. But it was great. I learned so much about hunting and how to carry a rifle properly. Really, really cool. Montana, shout out to you. I miss you. I will come visit soon. Next, we're gonna take possum and just dredge it in some flour. This will help kind of brown it up. Living in Montana also was the first time I was exposed to hunting culture, really. And for that area, it's a part of the year. There's a definite hunting season for different kinds of things. And it is part of the culture. People go out and they hunt for their meat. And some do it for sport. Some do it to fill up their freezers. And some do it also out of a combination of that and also tradition. Add a little bit of just neutral vegetable oil. Lard would be really good in this case. It has a high smoking point, would add some flavor. And we're just gonna place it right into our pan. Shake off the excess, just drop it in. I know that there's a tendency when it comes to browning meat to wanna stir things around, but you just really want it to sit there for a minute to get a good sear. That. I'm gonna add a little pat of butter. Melt that around. And some water. And now we're gonna place this in our preheated 350 degree oven and cook it for about 45 minutes. And then I'm gonna add some sweet potatoes that I've peeled and cut up. And then we're gonna cook in an additional 20 minutes covered and then remove the cover and then add a little bit of brown sugar and salt to the potatoes and cook it uncovered until the potatoes and the meat are fully tendered and nice and golden. And then we'll give everything a taste. My first taste of possums and sweet potatoes. Alrighty, see you a little bit. It smells so good in here, so stinking good. A little bit like fried chicken and just like a braised yumminess. I <laughs> cannot wait to taste this. It looks great. Look at this. Oh, it smells great too. Yes. Yo. Alrighty, my lovelies. This looks so good. I am so excited to taste it. Sweet potatoes and possum. Alrighty, my first taste of possum. Give thanks, possum. There it is, my first bite of possum. It's a ducky moss. Hmm. It does have a different texture that I'm used to. It's a little bit chewier but it's still tender and flavorful, but not as gamey as I thought it was gonna be. Not as, and when I say gamey, I mean kind of a strong livery flavor. Lamb, for example, has a distinctive kind of, in my opinion, gamey flavor. And when I say livery, I mean a bit metallic, a little bit irony, that kind of a flavor. This has it a little bit, but not as much as I would expect. The flavor is very good. It's a little bit sweet from the brown sugar, but what's unique is the texture. It's definitely chewy. See that? But it's pretty tender. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit resilient. I'm sure you could cook this even longer, say in a slow cooker, and it would be even softer, more like pulled pork perhaps, but it's a good meat. 
It definitely reminds me of some other wild game I had. I think one of my most memorable Thanksgivings is when lots of different people brought different kinds of game, including goose and antelope and venison, of course. So that was the first time that I had so many things at the table at one time. It was lovely. Mmm! Goes really well with the sweet potato, which are soft, inherently sweet, heightened with that little bit of brown sugar. Great. I thought the sweetness from the possum was from the brown sugar I added. But I think the meat itself is a little bit sweet. It reminds me a bit of like duck legs in terms of a texture. Some of my lovelies that chimed in in the comments on social media said that they had possum before and they found it very greasy. Now, my possum was skin. Didn't taste greasy to me at all. I felt the meat was actually quite lean and it's delicious. Some of you might have been wondering when I was doing the actual butchering process, what that was like. I felt that was very primal. It smelled like when you cook chicken. I know everyone says it, it tastes like chicken, but it, just, it smelled like chicken as I was butchering it. It didn't smell musky or bad. Once again, I am not recommending or suggesting that you eat roadkill. This is just my own experience. Alrighty, my lovelies, there you have it. I finally checked this box off and didn't really make a recipe from the Roadkill cookbook, but I did make a recipe using Roadkill. Alrighty, my lovelies, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope you learned something. Please share this video with your friends, follow me on social media, like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo, take care, bye. My kids are super excited to give this a taste. They're like, oh yeah, we're gonna have possum for dinner.